So in this video, I'm going to talk about why I think the digital deluxe version of Sonic Frontiers is not very good. In fact, it's confusing at best, and I really hope this doesn't set a precedent for Sega. Sega released digital deluxe versions of their first party games, and this in itself is not inherently a bad thing. Having extra content in the launch edition is fine as a sales incentive, unless it locks particular missions or gameplay aspects behind it. I wasn't keen on the Sonic Origins digital packs for this reason, with specific missions and modes being locked behind it at pre-order, albeit they were purchasable separately off the bat. It wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it did feel a little bit scummy. Now luckily Frontiers isn't doing anything like that, but it is doing something, as I said, that is very, very, very confusing. You see, what this edition contains is a few things. It contains a digital art book and mini soundtrack, which is great, no complaints from me there. You get cosmetic items for Sonic, special shoes and gloves like in Sonic Colors Ultimate, that's fine, our blue boy needs drip. It also comes with the in-game explorer's treasure box, which gives you in-game items, and this specifically is what I've got a problem with. You see, this is what it contains. It's got Amy's memory tokens, a portal gear and Chaos Emerald Vault Keys. So you might be asking yourself, why does this concern me? You see, these are the items that you need to earn in the game to progress, being given to you just right at the start. The core gameplay loop of Sonic Frontiers is to explore the Starfall Islands, solve puzzles, kick ass, take names, earn items to progress through the game and unlock more. You are essentially paying extra money at launch for the privilege of not having to play the game more because you are given the items that you need to earn, and that is frankly not a practice that I'm keen on. I understand wanting to give people a boost at the start of the game, absolutely, but the pre-order bonus already does this. It gives skill points and attack and defense raising items that make you stronger at the start. That is better as far as I'm concerned because it doesn't make you skip parts of the game you'd have to otherwise play. They just might be a bit simpler, a little bit easier at the start, but you still have to over all experience that part of the game. The Explorer's Treasure Box in the Digital Deluxe version just straight up gives you the items you'd normally earn in game that allows you to get to the later parts of the game earlier so it removes the necessity of experiencing all of the game. It gets a little worse when you look at the Steam page too. That still lists that you get Tails and Knuckles memory tokens which progresses you through even more of the game. These only seem to be listed on Steam and not anywhere else so I'm not sure what's going on there. It could be an error, it could be that you only get them in the Steam version. Either way, it's still shortening the overall story experience of Sonic Frontiers. And that just feels confusing to me, especially knowing that the more and more people who try this game out, the better and better it sounds. It's getting really great impressions from people all over the world from Tokyo Game Show and EGX in London. And a friend of mine actually went and played it in EGX and it's converted them from kind of being on the fence to instantly pre-ordering the game. It's got the John Cartwright seal of approval and plenty of long-time Sonic influencers and bloggers and such are saying that this game feels like something really special. So why is Sega trying to shorten the experience when they should be really getting people to play it as much as possible? So the offering of a digital deluxe version that requires less time investment in what is clearly a really cool game seems really baffling to me. I think this practice of putting in items specifically to make you play less of the game is a difficult precedent, especially for a Sonic game. I don't think early game boosts are a bad thing particularly. Having a nice early game weapon, extra potions or strengthening gear is usually fine because you still have to play that part of the game. Paying for what is tantamount to skipping part of the game early on feels wrong and I really hope this is a one-off because I don't want to see people suckered into paying more for playing less. We could have a debate in general about pre-order bonuses and digital deluxe versions being good and whatnot and I think I still may do that in time, but as far as this specific digital deluxe edition goes, I don't see the majority of the in-game offering being a good thing. At least with the pre-order bonus for skill points and such, with the physical version you don't have to put in the code. For the digital deluxe version it will likely auto download, so you have to get the memory tokens, vault keys and everything, which as I've said means less game for you to need to play to progress properly. Unless of course you can avoid redeeming those things in the game, let's say it's a specific physical location that you have to get to to get those tokens, in which case that kind of invalidates a fair bit of what I was saying, but it's still the principle of it that doesn't sit right with me. I understand this is just the way I feel about it. I figure Sega should be trying to get people to play as much of their game as possible, so I'd imagine there's an upside that I've not really considered. People have busy lives after all, and besides, a huge corporation like Sega Sammy would not release this if there was not a market for it, so there's likely an angle I haven't thought of here. I think this is starting to edge on a bit of an unhappy topic as to how much content actually constitutes a good game, and that sort of thing, I mean that's so subjective it would be very difficult to deal with through a video, but it's something to consider for the future. But getting back to Sonic Frontiers of course, I don't feel like the digital deluxe version for my circumstances is worth the time or money because I think those in-game items are a little bit weird and I really hope that Sega and other companies don't start charging more so you can play less of the game. That being said, I would love to get the art book and the soundtrack, although I'm sure there's another way that I can access that later down the line. I'd love to get a physical one if I can. Gotta say though, this is currently the only real problem I've got with Sonic Frontiers. Apart from that, everything's looking fantastic and this is really like a real small little gripe, but 
man, I'm so excited for this game. Are you excited as well? Have you played it already at one of the trade shows or are you going to be playing it soon? Let me know in the comments, of course, and if you've got any other thoughts about the Digital Deluxe or if you know more about that Steam version, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a chat about it. Make sure you hit subscribe for more awesome Sonic content coming from me and, you know, check this video out, some of my earlier Sonic content, but um, it's a good starting point. And if you enjoyed this, you're going to enjoy that. Check it out.